Hi everybody, welcome back to Simple Passive Income. My name is Vincent Mbata. Now on this channel, you know, we focus on crypto related how to tutorials as well as explore different ways to earn passive income with crypto, right? So this is what this channel is all about. I'm always on the lookout, you know, for opportunities where we can earn passive income. So one of those opportunities is Unicoin. I know I have been talking about Unicoin and how you can grab your free Unicoins, right? And uh, today I just wanted to just play one of the episodes so you can kind of get a background of this unicorns and maybe you know the the potential also you'll actually get to see what I mean by you know uh, when I say this has a big potential right so what I'm gonna sh what I'm gonna show you is basically a it's an episode of one of the one of the one of the of the unicorns as such right so if I just go to unicorn.com so you will know that there is a portfolio that is already, you know, that already exists, right? So these are the companies that are in the portfolio right now. So with Unicoin being a security coin as such, that basically means, you know, it's it's backed by equity, right? So, you know, with many tokens and many cryptos, it's really just like speculation and the value is just determined by, you know, what we think of it, right? Like retail investors. But in this case, this is actually backed by equity. So, I mean, the fluctuation won't be that much and the value will go up as the companies are doing well, right? So it's not just me and you like buying these tokens or, you know, or selling, you know, that will really affect the price, but it's also how these companies are doing, all right? And the other thing I like about it is, I mean, we will be earning, you know, you just, you end by really holding these coins. I mean, I, I would like to think there won't be a lot of people selling as such because, you know, you're getting paid for holding. So why would you want to, why would you want to sell? <laughs> okay. For just a quick buck. So, you know, personally, I mean, I'm going to be holding most of, of the, of these coins anyway, because it's like, you know, it's passive income for me. So you're getting, you know, the value goes up over time because what they want to do is they want to go for like a, a $40 per coin, right? Because they have their own kind of, they have their own kind of um, projections and stuff where they want to go. I know with $40 per coin, I think it'll then have a $500 million uh, value, right? Uh, the valuation now, it would be around like 500 million. I think that's, that's the valuation they're going after. So, I mean, you know, if you look at what these guys are doing and the marketing behind it and, you know, the people supporting uh, this project, I really think it's going to it's going to do well. I think it's going to really do well. So the one I'm going to play you is this one, Vast Minds. I mean, just look at the technology that these guys, are, uh, you know, that these guys have. Right. Remember, these companies are already existing. So with Unicorn Hunters or Unicorn Hunters, they basically look for the next unicorn. OK, which is a company with a billion dollar evaluation or more. So that's what that's what they do. So you get people or companies, you know, pitch their deals or pitch their company uh, to to the investors. And then, you know, they either get a yes or a no. All right. As far as investing or funding. So, I mean, if you like, you can watch you can watch more episodes here. OK. You can watch more episodes here um, on, you know, Unicorn Unicorn Hunters or even on on, on YouTube because they have a Unicorn Hunters uh, channel. So you can also watch the other episodes there. So, yes, that is, you know, just thought I should maybe just, you know, give you a bit of a background. So, again, the the coins are still up for grabs. It's still, you can still claim your 300 coins uh your unicorns and i mean if you want to buy more because maybe you you um you you see the potential not financial advice right you can you can do that you know if you want to buy more like over and above the 100 unicorns that you'll be getting for free all right so i will leave the link to to that below this video it's basically unicorn dot simple passive income dot net all right then you'll be able to, you know, claim your free unicorns. And then, like I said, if you would like to still buy more for yourself, then then absolutely. As you can see, like I said, you'll be, I mean, 
The Unicoin is the official cryptocurrency of Unicorn Hunters with a target value of $40 per coin. That's what they want to, that's what they're aiming for, right? So, and right now it's like 20, it's 20 cents right now. When I first spoke about it, it was 10 cents, right? Now it's 20 cents. So it's, it's just going to keep going up. And when they launch, it will be basically a, a dollar, the launch uh, for a dollar. Okay. So it, it's got like different cycles. All right. So you can obviously go ahead and, you know, purchase whilst it's still cheap if you want to okay so that is it for this video guys just wanted to to leave you with that just to also give you a bit of background and what you know the kind of the kind of companies that these guys go for and the kind of you know quality quality companies that they invest in so with you owning you know with you owning unicorns you own you know literally you have a share in each of these companies that's why you, you also you also getting paid you know so that that is awesome it's not live yet they'll be the coin is not they'll only be minting the coin like towards the end of the year or beginning of, of next year somewhere around there so at this stage it's just you know brand uh, awareness just creating awareness of the brand etc and then they'll start minting and then you'll get to access your coins but the claiming i mean it won't be it's just for a limited time only that you're getting to that you can claim for your free unicorns okay you won't have access forever it won't you don't be up for grabs forever obviously once they reach their target then they're gonna stop the 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 you know the free unicorn giveaway and then it will just basically be now ready for launch etc okay so that is that you guys have a fantastic one if you haven't subscribed to the channel already do hit that subscribe button and uh hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever i release a new video and do like this video if you found it entertaining or informative okay and uh, so fo follow me on social media as well i'll leave my social media channels below this video and also go to simple passive income net for all your crypto related education all right until next time guys have a fantastic one what i'm holding here has the potential to help save 10 million lives Unicorn Hunter. Esta hora hablamos de Unicorn Hunters. Unicorn Hunters is looking for that next billion dollar idea from entrepreneurs. We're searching for that billion dollar business, a unicorn. RUV Technologies has developed Krypton disinfection lighting. Forte is a tech company that enables DIMMs to create a digital experience. The CVAC system is an air vacuum chamber. Mechanical trees solve climate change. Our technology now has the ability to predict health outcomes and save lives. What concerns me, your lack of ambition. 70 million in three years, that's not much. I love supporting small business, but is this a big enough market? To what degree it's a personal course for you, and to what degree it's business? Why aren't you already a unicorn? Your gross revenue was $126,000. How are you gonna increase that for 2021? <sighs> do you see yourself on the acquisition path in the near term, or do you prefer to take this company to IPO? That out-of-pocket cost is not a reality. Order! Order! This show has a very good chance of changing the world. We gotta get down to business. You'd actually make rather a good prime minister. I think we're looking at the next Elon Musk. Everyone is going to benefit. I must show you one more thing. There's more? <gasps> This sounds like a labor-intensive business model. Why are you doing this? So what's your why? How many women work at Vast Minds, and how are you including them? I like a lot of things about it. But before you get too cocky... I don't know if people are going to invest. This didn't go as expected. The best presentation I've yet to see at Unicorn Hunters. By far. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. I'm in. I'm definitely in. And I'm going to invest. Let's go, Nick. Let's go, Nick. Can you call my mom?
I would like to say that I'm calm. Now, if we look at one disease in particular, cardiovascular disease. You can prep for hours, for weeks, for months, and it all comes down to this one moment. And that's really what kicks up the nerves. All right, let's do it. Personally, this is probably one of the biggest opportunities of my life. Stepping into the circle of money is London native Nick Seagal, who, at the tender age of 30, used his own technology to build an empire worth $80 million. With the simple objective of changing the global healthcare imbalance for everyone with a smartphone, this young visionary is bringing a prospective medtech unicorn to the circle of money. Okay, let's stand by. I'm Nick Segal. I am the founder and CEO of VastMind, and I am passionate about improving health and wellness around the world. Now, too many people are dying of preventable diseases, and global prevention must be a priority. VastMind is solving this by democratizing access to health and wellness data in an innovative way. Now, if we look at one preventable disease in particular, cardiovascular disease, this disease is responsible for killing one person every 36 seconds and is expected to cost the global economy over 1 trillion US dollars by the year 2030. Therefore, understanding risk factors associated with this disease, such as simple physiological changes in an easy and accessible way is essential. Unfortunately, many people can't do this without the use of costly physical devices. But the one thing many people do have, however, is a smartphone. VastMind's technology works on any device with an embedded camera and utilizes artificial intelligence to monitor an individual through the lens of that camera. Specifically, we measure subtle changes in light absorption on an individual's skin that is reflective of their physiological condition. Meaning, we can extract their resting pulse rate, their respiratory rate, their stress levels, and other factors in seconds without even touching them. This is all possible because we exploit the phenomenon that the human skin is translucent, meaning that visible wavelengths of light can penetrate the skin, and we can extract this vital information without any contact whatsoever. Now, not only am I the founder and CEO of this company, I'm also one of the lead engineers. So I'm excited to show you how this technology works. Now, who out of the panelists would like to help me in demonstrating this technology? I'll do it. All right, Rosie, I'm going to get you. <laughs> Go for it. Ladies first, of course. Now, Rosie, I want you just to rest the phone, make sure your face is centered, and press start whenever you're ready. Now, what you're about to see is our application measures subtle changes in light absorption on Rosie's skin. And in a few seconds, we'll be able to extract her physiological signal that will tell us about her pulse rate, her respiratory rate, and other physiological parameters in just seconds. And this is without any contact whatsoever. We can see that her pulse rate is 90. It looks like you're a bit nervous, Rosie. <laughs> but don't worry, I got you. I'm gonna just take that back off you. I don't wanna spoil the whole thing. But as you can see, our technology now has the ability to extract this information about any individual, no matter where they are in the world. Our B2B model offers a low cost SaaS solution to enable companies to remotely put this technology in the hands of millions of users. And we want this in the hands of millions more. So I'm seeking $10 million at a $60 million pre-money valuation these funds will be used to scale our engineering team, onboard new customers aggressively, accelerate R&D of new product lines to support different industries, including the pet health and wellness industry, 
And before I founded Vast Minds, I spent time as an algorithmic trader, attempting to make algorithms smarter at predicting investment decisions. But ultimately, I was drawn to the ability to be able to predict health outcomes, save lives and democratize access to health and wellness data in the same way that unicorn hunters is seeking to democratize investment. Now, I started this company with my own money, so there's no doubt I am all in. So I hope you, the panelists, and the viewers around the world will join us, Vast Minds, as we change the future of health and wellness. Thank you so much for listening. All right, well, since I'm the first one, that was the, the guinea, guinea pig, pig here. Yeah. So what did you learn from that about me? So I learned that your resting pulse rate was a little bit higher than normal. Okay. Your respiratory rate was okay. Your stress level was also okay. Your physiological signal looked okay. There was no irregularity there. So it looks like you're good, Rosie. Wait till you get to know her. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait. Oh, normal's good, I'll take it. You know, Nick, I'm gonna put on my lawyer hat for just a second. You think that your product here is subject to frivolous abuse in an abusive manner. An airline company we're talking to actually thought of a use case of measuring the stress levels of individuals coming to customs. But ethically, I thought that's not really a right use case to pursue for this product. This product is about allowing anyone to access their own health and wellness data. We don't really want to tinker with the ethical bounds of triaging individuals because their stress levels are high. You're trying to reach everyone you want it to be low cost and easy to use low cost and, and easy we sort to of use. saw a demonstration of that exactly which is there always a doctor involved does the device actually notify a doctor if something's wrong so there's actually various use cases so if we look at telehealth applications so whereby i can have a call with a doctor virtually we can actually integrate our software remotely within those applications so that before I speak with a doctor, I'm able to take a scan of my physiology. Not only that, I'm able to store historical information about my physiology so we can understand what is your physiological baseline? What is Steve's regular resting pulse rate? What is his regular resting respiratory rate? Because that is far more important than just a snapshot of your physiology. Oh, I think, Mr. Speaker, you might have a question yes. from your hometown my hometown. of London. Speaker Burkow. It's great to have you here, Mr. Speaker. Nikhil, thank you. And I would say that your initial evaluation of Rosie, that all's good here, seems to me to be emblematic of your toolkit to become a professional politician if you don't become a unicorn. <laughs> well, I was quite struck by the fact that you talked about how you were at least in part motivated by your opposition to racial bias. Mm -hmm. Are you essentially saying that existing apps or technology, not necessarily deliberately but inadvertently, do discriminate against people who are not of white skin? And what is it about your technology that will avoid that danger? One of the things that existing devices may suffer from is sometimes the inability to effectively pick up these signals from individuals of darker skin tone. This is something one of our clinical advisors, he's also a governing board member at Stanford University, he says that existing, even if they are FDA approved, suffer from some kind of racial bias because individuals of darker skin like myself we have a higher melanin concentration. Typical devices which only look at one point on the skin, let's say either pulse oximeter, which only looks at your finger, they can sometimes suffer if there's a high level of melanin concentration on the skin. One of the things we benefit from is spatial redundancy. The face is a lot of a larger surface area. We can actually grid the face into multiple sensors. So there's multiple points to pick from the face which could exhibit a better physiological signal. The fact that we benefit from spatial redundancy increases the probability that we're able to pick up this physiological signal. In one of your responses, uh, you referenced to FDA-approved devices. Yes. Does your software has to be FDA-approved? Yes. Have you done international legal research to be a subject of government approval? Yes, FDA approval is necessary. And actually, we already have Two individuals on our team who are our clinical advisors, George Sarkis and Dr. George Woods. So I, George Sarkis has actually taken multiple products through the FDA process. We've already secured an agreement with Presswood Behavioral Health, which is one of California's largest mental health related services. 
Not only will it give us the opportunity to be reimbursed by insurers, but it opens up a new revenue stream of it penetrating the public healthcare market and being able to make a medical diagnosis using our technology. Did you mention animals like pets? Yes, so we have actually recently launched a new product called Biopulse. This is a way that we can extract the respiratory rate variability of a pet just by analyzing a video of them sleeping. And this came about because the pet insurance market is growing and the only way to currently monitor your pet is through wearable devices. Individuals now have the superpower to analyze their pet just through video. And what we do is by analyzing a sleeping pet, we can lock onto certain parts of the body which are exhibiting respiratory motion and understand their respiratory rate variability. 75% of senior dogs suffer from heart disease. What's the number one way to catch if your pet is on the trajectory to suffering from heart disease? Monitoring an increase in respiratory rate. Nikhil, so you mentioned democratizing access to healthcare and this resonates enormously with me. Who is your client? Is your client an insurance company or government development banks? How do you plan to use your technology to make sure that people in less developed countries have access to these kind of services? Our clients are typically telehealth applications, so a platform where users can log on and connect to a doctor virtually. We've already secured deals in Nigeria, Singapore, and other parts of the Asia Pacific where you have developing regions and people generally don't have much access to healthcare. But now they have the ability through a virtual platform to understand their physiology and send this physiology to their users. So Nick, let's get into the numbers. Yes. You're a numbers person, but something doesn't seem to add up for me here. So you have your current valuation at $60 million. Your pre-show investment was $2 million, but your gross revenue in 2020 was $60,000. How'd you get to that $60 million valuation? So actually that was in 2020. So we've actually just started commercializing this financial year of 2021. So typically when we engage with the business, we charge them about $15,000, which supports access to our software development kit and integration with their platform. And then typically this is out in the open for all of their users to use. And we charge per reading, or as we call from a technical background, per API request, which is typically about 30 cents. Now for the financial year of 2021, we came to eclipse half a million dollars by scaling within telehealth companies and health insurance. Now that excludes some of our big hits. Now those big hits include large insurance companies with a large amount of policyholders. And one example, we're actually talking to a large insurance company in the Asia Pacific, and they have 10 million policyholders on their platform. So if all of those policyholders were able to just use our service just once a month, at 30 cents a reading, that's on average an annual contract deal of $36 million. Amen to that. So on that note, we are right now being watched by millions of people around the globe. But I want to welcome one of our celebrity investors right here in Los Angeles from the championship team, Los Angeles Lakers, Dwight Howard. Hey, Nick, how you doing, man? I love your pitch. Wow. I just have a couple questions for you. Being a pro athlete is always about setting goals. So for you, what is your goal? And in the end, what is your championship? What are you trying to accomplish? For me, in everything I do, I try to find a reason, my why of doing it. So what's your why? It's, it's more of a personal thing. Cardiovascular disease is run in my family. My granddad unfortunately passed away because of a cardiovascular condition. My dad's brother actually had a heart attack. My dad was close to that. So it runs in my family. And if I can find a way to improve the quality of life of my loved ones, then there is nothing that's going to stop me. And if we can become a unicorn doing it, because everyone wants to improve the quality of life of their loved ones, then that's just a big bonus for us. Nick, thank you so much. I love your answer. Oh my God, this sounds like a slam dunk. <laughs> Good luck, congratulations <laughs> for your company, man. And I'll be rooting for you. Let's go, Nick. 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 I got you, Dwight. <laughs> Nikhil, do you see any other applications in healthcare or otherwise which you'd like to pursue? Yes, one actually in the automotive space. A lot of these new cars have smart sensors on their dashboards to monitor driver fatigue. 
So they already have the hardware necessary for us to deploy our technology. Toyota have done a lot of research on cars to predict cardiac arrests. Wow. And now wow. we have actually the ability to understand what's happening beneath the driver's skin. So this is an unconventional space that we're also looking to pursue. Do we not have to be slightly careful that we don't have, to put it bluntly, companies have got of interest only in taking on very, very, very healthy people and preventing job opportunities to people who might not be particularly healthy. Yeah, absolutely. And really, this is all about providing access to those individuals who potentially might not even be able to be insured. But if we're able to remotely monitor their physiology over time, then insurers have peace of mind because they're able to assess their risk. But we're providing them an opportunity to attract new business. Oh. This is actually a way okay. to be more inclusive rather than exclusive. So just as Unicorn Hunters has found an innovative way to include John today as a panelist, we also have included a global investor who would like to ask us a question. Hi, my name is Kendra Karake and I'm from Vancouver, Washington. How does this democratize healthcare when you need a doctor or a healthcare provider to use the software and disenfranchised people tend to not have either? Yeah, that's a great question. It's all about enabling healthcare applications who connect, let's say, users like myself to a doctor, but enabling them with more information. Now, there are some parts of the world which cannot access doctors, but I don't need to be in physical contact with the doctor anymore. I can actually be effectively triaged virtually. I don't want to be in any way disrespectful, but you are relatively young. Who are you surrounding yourself with? Whilst I am young, we had a partnership with the National Physical Laboratory and we were selected as an individual where they would grant resources of their senior scientists to help us develop our product. Now, some of our advisors are highly reputable scientists. In fact, Professor Mel Lobo, he's one of the leading hypertension specialists in London. And these are the kinds of people I need to surround myself with to help support me in my learning and our business as we hope to scale. If there are no more questions, then I'd like to ask you to please step outside the circle of money so that we can deliberate and talk behind your back. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I am just hoping the panel sees that we have a tool that could really help a lot of people. If we don't get the investment today, it would really mean a slower trajectory path for us. So it would really mean a lot if we were to be backed by the unicorn hunters today. One person who probably understands my struggle is the Waz. He was a young engineer himself. He had to do everything. To have that sort of impact on Waz and make him I'll actually shed a tear while showing one of our products that could support the quality of life of pets. Uh, I, I can't even describe having that impact on the Waz. It's, it's, it's out of this world. Okay, guys, are we ready to talk some business? Yeah, I was inspired. I thought he was seriously impressive. I would say he's visionary and determined, but he's also ready to learn. He's a good communicator and he talks the talk and I think he can walk the walk, but he's also a good listener and he's ready to bring people into the team who will help him crystallize his plan from conception to executions. I have some concerns. I'm a little worried about what Rosie asked, which was, you really haven't penetrated the market very much yet. And so I don't know that we have a complete proof of concept. Yeah, I didn't think he answered my question about the $60 million valuation. You can't just throw out, there's a potential for this $36 million recurring revenue. That's not the way you get to evaluation. Yeah. But I, I kind of think of him as a kind of a, a startup startup. He's really at the initial stages. Yeah, and, and I have to agree with Rossi and Mo. I think he's absolutely brilliant. He has everything that he needs to have to be successful as an entrepreneur. He's thinking big, but acting disproportionately big considering the stage of his company. So he's a little bit all over the places in terms of market expansion. I heard him very much as an engineer looking at all the right details in the right way. He had an instant answer to every one of our questions. Yes. What engineer can communicate that well? <laughs> it's very unusual. He was on top of everything going on in his business. And that's a very good thing to start with. Yeah, this is exactly the type of founder I would love to invest in. Yeah. I'm not too concerned with the market marketing behind this because I think this is a marketer's dream. 
because it's so visual. It's all about the face. So if you imagine Jennifer Aniston being the face of this and you just see her face being analyzed, boom, everyone's going to know about this pretty quickly. Well, it's one of those rare moments when I disagree. Yes, he's in early stages, but that's exactly what's reflected in the low evolution now. Because right now, unicorns appear at a much higher pace. Uh, investors recognize potential in companies early enough and provide funds sufficient to do the expansion. Uh, he had $60,000 of gross revenue in 2020. That is pretty early. But you know, Rosie, revenue is only one way to determine valuation. No, absolutely. Valuation. No. Well, that was for him to explain, though. I agree. There are a myriad of ways to determine valuations. Sylvina, Rosie, I just wonder whether either of you would be reassured if he were to buttress his project with somebody with a strong commercial footprint as a consultant or a non-executive director. I'm sure that the the ethics of the program prohibit it, but what he needs is the equivalent on his board to guide and counsel him of the was. Mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> that would be very, very hard to replicate. But... <laughs> no, okay, I take your but, point. But I think there are better alternatives even than I. <laughs> Shall we bring him back? Yeah, let's. Let's do it. Okay. So Nick, you did a great job, and you now have 60 seconds to impress the rest of our global investors. We believe everyone should possess the superpower to understand what's going on beneath their skins and within their bodies. And we finally now have the ability to put this superpower in the palms of everyone's hands. Now, I took a bet. I plunged my life savings. I took a bet on myself, a bet that I was able to learn fast, deliver innovative solutions to a population in need of these. So there was never and still is not an option to fail. And only in a short period of time, we've amassed a team of highly reputable scientists, medical professionals, and partnered with some large organizations globally. And we're just getting started. So I hope you and the viewers around the world will help our mission in changing the future of health and wellness. And now it's time for our final thoughts, Nick. Was every answer you had was really understandable and on the mark. That impressed me because not many engineers have that skill. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I cried a little about dogs. Oh, yeah. but we're here to save them. Yes. Uh, you had me at dogs also. But before we give our final verdicts, I'd like to know your vitals right now. I want to see how your heart rate is doing in this circumstance. So we, can we measure right. that? Let's do it. I want to do it. The okay. moment of truth. All right. That's great. All right, you ready? Yes. Here we go. You're really taking a selfie that you're going to sell right. now. What if two faces get into it? Ah. <laughs> what of them? Heart rate is 150, just looking over that Rosie. Wow. Okay. Whoa. Wow. Oh, it's Thank up there, you. though. So 90 wasn't so bad, was it, Nick? I'm pretty nervous, I'll tell you that, Obviously guys. Obviously you are, <laughs> yeah. 131. Maybe you know, one... This is the first kind of thing for me to do, so. There's your face of roses. Your Maybe 150 is lower yeah. than Then I'll probably go down. Let's yet. see if it lowers now. <laughs> there we go, oh. <laughs> <sighs> Nick, I like your vision. I really think this concept is really great. A couple of things, you are a very young startup. I think you can probably use a lot more traction. Hopefully you'll get that. Concerned about your liquidity milestones. That's just something to think about, especially when you're in the investor stage. And your background in math and economics is perfect for what you do. Partnering that with the medical community, I think you'll be well on your way. Thank you so much, Rosie. I love the vision. I am a little concerned about the uh, big of the opportunity and how spread it you are at this stage of the business. But I also have fear of missing out. This is exactly why we need the funds. We know exactly what we need to do to make sure we don't spread thin. Nick, look, I've got some concerns. All of them were addressed so eloquently by you. I cannot wait to watch you soar. 
You know, Nikhil, one of the most common cliches in the investment world is we invest in people, not in technology. I always disliked that cliche because you know, who would invest in Google if there were no technology? But here, this cliche is sometimes applicable and you impressed uh, me just as the rest of the panel. Thank you so much, Alex. Nikhil, you're a good guy with a great idea and the capacity to translate an idea into reality. But I turn now to the was, because the time has come for his verdict. Very simple. I am in. Thank you so much, Steve. It means a lot. I love you. This is exactly why this show exists, to be able to democratize health and democratize investment. So I am definitely in. Thank you, Lance. I'm right there with mm -hmm. you. Nick, if you're Superman, I'm glad I wore my cape today. <laughs> so I'm in. Thank you so much, Rosie. Shining the lady next to me, so I'm in. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sylvia. Uh -huh. Nick, honestly, by far, in my eyes, the best presentation I've yet to see at Unicorn Hunters. Wow, by far. Weird. I am unequivocally 150 billion thousand percent in, Nick. Thank you so much, bro. Nikhil, I'm definitely in. Thank you so much, Alex. Nikhil, without hesitation or qualification, I'm in. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you so much. So Nick, you. you got seven unanimous votes. You are a golden unicorn. Thank you so much. Seven out of seven. I was surprised to actually get unanimous votes. I have probably got the biggest boost of motivation that anyone could have possibly ever given me. Wait, I have something for you. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. This is your lucky two dollar bill. Just for the record, I'm getting a live signature from Rosie Rios. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Don't spend it all one place. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is not going anywhere. <laughs> this shows some form of validation that they actually believe in our mission and my passion in scaling this company. So proud of you. Thank you so, so proud much. Of you. There's nothing that will stop us now. Alex, thank you so much. <laughs> Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Nikhil, can I give you a virtual handshake? Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I'll see you back home. It's just my as warm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you.